The Celtics completely breaking up their team depends on one thing. If Jalen Brown makes All-NBA, he stays a Celtic. If not, he's gone. It's that simple. Don't believe me? Brian Windhorst explained how bad it actually is in Boston. If he does not get All-NBA, he will almost certainly not extend with the Celtics. It's that bad? I'm sorry, but Brian Windhorst doesn't just say stuff like that. If he says Jalen Brown is almost 100% leaving, it is a real report. So will he make All-NBA? Seems pretty important. If he does, only the Celtics can give him an extra $100 million. That's why he would stay. So will it happen? It's not hard to figure out. But casual fans have no idea how good Jalen Brown is. They think of him as Jason Tatum's little sidekick. It's more like Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, both superstars with an MVP ceiling. He dunks on people, even with a mask on, probably especially with a mask on, locks down superstars on defense and hits threes. But of guys with at least 50 games played, the only other players with Jalen's numbers are Embiid, Giannis, Steph, Kyrie, and SGA. That's it. The Celtics have a winning record when Jalen Brown plays without Jason Tatum. So does he want his own team? It sounds like he does. Last summer when Kevin Durant demanded a trade, Sham said the C's offered Jalen, Derek White, and Picks. Then video came out of Tatum and KD working out together. So Jalen got on a group FaceTime with Jason Tatum and the GM Brad Stevens. Stevens assured Brown he wasn't going anywhere. But... That report didn't come out of nowhere. Jalen says, it just didn't seem like that was the direction that the organization was going in. I don't know. It was hard to tell, at least. It's fair to say Jalen felt disrespected they put him in trade rumors, then lied to his face on FaceTime when he asked. That came after he helped lead them to the finals. Then last month, when KD was actually about to be traded, the same rumors popped up. The team owner this time called Jalen to reassure him. So now he's fed up. They'll tell you one thing, then behind closed doors they'll say another, and they'll trade you off. Where I'm from in the South, if you don't come through the front door, it's considered disrespectful. I feel like everybody wants to go through the back door or come through an angle. Translation, don't lie to me. The C's messed up, not just by trying to trade Jalen, but by lying to him over and over. Now, according to ESPN, if he gets the chance to leave, he's gone. But is that gonna happen? The most any other team can offer him is a four-year, $185 million contract. The Celtics could offer five years, 249. Apparently, Jalen feels like the difference of 64 million is not enough to stay. But if he makes all NBA, the C's could offer five years to 90. That is a hundred and five million more bucks. He'll stay for that. So it all hinges on making all NBA. Will he make it? Let's see what his chances are. The purpose of all NBA is to find the 15 best players in the league. All star has a lot to do with popularity, but all NBA just names the best players regardless of conference. The current system is 100 media members vote for two guards, two forwards, and a center for all three NBA teams. The big problem, if a guy gets votes at guard and forward, or like forward and center, only the position that gets the most votes counts. All the other votes get thrown out. For example, two years ago, Jason Tatum got more total votes than Kyrie, but Kai made all NBA because all of his votes were at guard. Tatum's were split, some at guard, some at forward. That's not fair. This caused him to miss all NBA and a Supermax contract. Some voter on his couch cost Tatum 32 million bucks. Tatum said one guy didn't vote for him just because I just doesn't like him as a player that much. The fact that somebody could have that thought and basically cost someone $30 million, forget about me. Say the next rookie extension guys that come in. I think that has to change. And what's so crazy is Tatum doesn't even realize he might get screwed over again. Forget the next rookie down the line. This could cost him his best teammate. It happens almost every year. In 2020, Chris Middleton and Joel Embiid got more votes than Ben Simmons and Russell Westbrook. But Ben and Russ made All-NBA. 
Middleton and Bead missed out. So will Jalen get screwed because he plays guard and forward? Well, if he's a guard, it's bad. The competition is ridiculous. The three All-NBA teams could be guards, Luka and Dame, Steph and Shea, Jaw and Spida Mitchell. Fords, Tatum and Giannis, Kawhi and Laurie Markkinen, LeBron and Jalen Brown. I put him in there. My centers, Embiid, Jokic, and Sabonis, which means there are a ton of snubs at guard. Look at all of these guard snubs. Some of them you could easily make the case that they should be all NBA, but then look at the Fords. Just three legit forward snubs and two center snubs and yes anthony davis has played 100 percent at center but i put Demona sabonis in there either way you can see how tough it is to be an all nba guard but luckily for jalen he has played most of his minutes at forward the problem this is one year after he played guard for the celtics so if any of these voters are just being lazy and they're like, oh, isn't Jalen Brown a guard? And then they vote for him at guard, even though that is not the case. He could easily miss all NBA. And if that happens, we already know he is leaving. So where could he go next? Now, if the Celtics lose him for nothing, it could be devastating to their franchise. They have to get something back in return. And the good news is that a sign and trade is most likely because the only teams that could just get Jalen for nothing for cap space, they all kind of suck this offseason. So if he wants to compete for a title, he'll need to sign and trade somewhere. Where will that be? Well, most of the league would be interested, obviously. Let's just look at the most realistic options for Jalen Brown's next team. Number one is the Atlanta Hawks. Jalen is from there. He could be considered their best overall player. The trade would center around John Collins' contract, and Jalen would fit well next to Trey and DeJounte Murray. Next, the Chicago Bulls, who are ready to make a big move this offseason. The trade would center around DeMar DeRozan, and if Jalen is looking for his own team, he would be considered their number one over Zach Levine. I also like the Blazers, because they're going to make a huge trade. Portland can offer a mix of Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, and a really high draft pick. Dame, Jalen Brown, and Jeremy Grant, not actually a contender in the West, but they will be motivated to do this deal. But I love the New Orleans Pelicans. They have a ton of assets to move in a trade, and they could send back Brandon Ingram to Boston. Not a great replacement for Jalen Brown, but it's better than nothing. The Pels are a contender when healthy, and Jalen would be the focal point along with Zion. But if this happens, I think it would backfire for Jalen Brown. I know he's angry about how Boston has treated him, but the NBA is a business. Wherever he goes, it's not going to have nearly the same talent as the Celtics roster. They have dogs at every single position. Guys who are smart, mature, they can score, they can defend all around him. Life is pretty easy. If he actually leaves, I'll bet he looks back and wishes he was still on a championship contender in a stable franchise like the Celtics. His thought process here... I think is a huge mistake, but the Blazers deserve their own video. I mean, Dame is first team all NBA. That's where I had him, but he's never going to make the playoffs. The good news is Portland is about to have a huge offseason, and I did do a deep dive on the entire thing. Check it out. Man.